Mr. Speaker, Section 377A of the Penal Code is a complex topic, one that has been passionately debated in and out of this House. I'm glad that Singapore's government has decided to finally repeal 377A. I believe Section 377A is no longer relevant in contemporary Singaporean society. I agree with its repeal. I would also like to state my support for the inclusion of Article 156 of the Constitution, which clarifies the power to make laws to do with the institution of marriage, rightly vests with this very Parliament, and for Parliament to protect the prevailing definition of marriage. This could potentially be a divisive issue, but it may not be. I see it instead as an opportunity to open meaningful conversations about equality and inclusivity within our society. Equality being one of our nation's ideals. We need to ensure that policies implemented to uphold equal protection of rights for Singaporeans who do not fit squarely into the definition of traditional family unit. So for instance, single parent households and LGBTQ Singaporeans amongst others. After all, these people and many others not mentioned contribute to the diverse, vibrant, welcoming society that is so admired around the world. Do our policies recognize this? And are we doing enough for them? In this regard, I would like to put forward the following suggestions. First, can PMO consider co coordinating a policy review across the whole of government and ensure that those who are not married are actively considered as part of the policy making process? Other jurisdictions, such as the European Union, have undertaken similar reviews in ensuring that all citizens, regardless of their background, are not unfairly discriminated against. This also ties into the ongoing Forward Singapore exercise as we refresh our social compact to pursue a more equal and inclusive society. Second, we'll be on education for our children. Are we doing enough to ensure that our children understand that even though their peers may not fit into the definition of a traditional family unit, either because of their home situation or their personal realities, that these peers should not be treated differently or worse, derivatively. Uh, I would like to encourage MOE to have meaningful conversations with students, not for the purposes of problem solving, but to seek understanding. I would like to see more education content on handling relationships, not just the hetero, in the heterosexual sense, but all definitions of relationships. I agree with my parliamentary colleague here, uh, the Honourable Member Daryl David, that you know, school should be a safe space to explore, to debate, to educate about respect and, and, and inclusivity. And you know, we should train our teachers to have productive conversations with students about these. So in conclusion, Mr. Speaker, sir, regardless of where all this, all in this house stand, I think we all agree that we want the best for our country and our people for a prosperous, and inclusive, and forward-looking Singapore. During his speech to announce Singapore's independence from Malaysia on 9th August 1965, our founding father Lee Kuan Yew said, quote, everyone will have his place, equal, language, culture, religion, unquote. We are thus compelled to move in this direction and ensure that every Singaporean can live a joyful, happy, and peaceful life and contribute meaningfully to this great nation. It is based on these ideals for a better Singapore that were first articulated more than five decades ago that we have built this inclusive global city which we are all proud to call home today. Singapore has indeed become a beacon for many and while conservative in our nature, we are a tolerant, peaceful, and harmonious society where everyone can live in community without fear. I hope that one day we will not have to rely on the Constitution to safeguard, respect, and celebrate our differences, where there is a lot more binding us together as Singaporeans, a love for food, being kiasu, being champion, grumblers, than what differentiates us. We have built a society based on interracial and interreligious harmony I'm certain we can establish a similarly harmonious relationship between each other regardless of our differences. 
In fact, we can learn to welcome, protect and even celebrate those differences as one diverse, inclusive, harmonious nation of Singaporeans.